I am a born again Christian. I love gay people, I love transgender, I love everyone. Am I likely to lose my job? Or more importantly, am I likely to be asked to leave my church? Tim. Well, there certainly has been a uh, wind up that happened uh, by the Murdoch Press Herald Sun in Melbourne that uh, has led to... After the, whole... after the Essendon case, of course, where the CEO had to step down or chose his church over, the, over remaining in his job. So the uh, Herald Sun ran the story of uh, the pastor's sermon 13 years ago, bits of which he's apologised for and which I don't think was a good sermon. Pointed out that Andrew Thorborn, just appointed CEO, was a member of that church. He was a chair on the parish council of the, of the church. And uh, the AFL and everyone said, right decision, diversity, inclusion. Then the Herald Sun uh, went and said to the church leaders, you can't now, uh, with people of faith, you know, be sure of a job. And uh, the front page of the Herald Sun then was holy war. Dan Andrews, a Catholic, against his own uh, Catholic archbishop. Uh, Dan working out the 20% of voters in the election in four weeks' time are a Catholic. So he said, oh, I take my faith very seriously. And uh, <laughs> every day it guides what I do. Uh, what's sad to me about that was the wind-up that happened meant that the social media posse all jumped uh, instead of pushing the pause button, particularly the culture warriors on both sides. Most of us are just in the exhausted middle. Most of us are just saying, hang on, it's a bit more complex, take time, think this out. Now, to your question, I believe God loves diversity. He sure made a lot of it. Uh, I uh, believe that homophobia is a sin, but I also uh, totally understand that um, whether it's Christian or religious Jew or Muslim scriptures, absolutely the belief of how we flourish is that sexuality flourishes best within a marriage between a man and woman. And I think Andrew Thorburn can hold those views and still do the job at Essendon. I think... It was a rush that's, to judgment. That's the issue, though. When, when those views clash um, and Essendon holds different views to the church that Andrew Thorburn leads, Peter, do you fear that you'd be made to make these choices? Is that what you're saying? I'm afraid that those choices might be made uh, for me in my job, that uh, if somebody finds out that the church that I was at, that I'm at, uh, did some things in a sermon, say, eight years ago, mm. um, and then I get tied with the same with the same brush in the same way. Saba, can I bring you in here? Because we were talking before about Iran. Sarah stood up and she said she could be killed mm. for the way that she looks because she is violating an instruction from a theocracy in Iran. In Australia, how do we decide where that line is between religious freedom and expression of that and the rights of others to be free from the expression of religious freedom? Yeah, as a person who grew up under religion, religious dictatorship, my um, mind, my bed, my life, um, my choice has been seized by another person. It has been considered another person's in entitlement. I would support any individual person's choice, but as an individual belief, it, it becomes problematic when they have the power to gather together to make a group or um, as a, you know, just impose as a law. Mm. The, the, the personal belief can be expanded and become law. Erin Brockovich, you have a, a Bill of Rights in the United States. Is it sufficient to mediate these types of disputes? Because, of course, you live in a country, as we are, where there's separation between church and right. state, a secular society, but a very, also a very religious society as well. So how does a Bill of Rights work in mediating these things? Well, you know, it's, I've, I've, I had an interesting situation happen in Australia a few years ago where there was an environmental injustice, there was something happening, and I was watching people who were standing there watching, and I'm thinking to myself, why are you not saying something or doing anything? And the response back was, well, we don't have a Bill of Rights. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, maybe you want to get busy doing that. <laughs> so, I, you know, my response would be that I think a Bill of Rights is... I um, disagree. Yeah, pardon me? A hard disagree. 
A hard disagree. And, uh, sorry, I will, I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. Uh, yeah. No, that, that's really kind of, you know, it was that moment that happened for me when we were talking about the Bill of what? Rights in Australia that I'm like, oh my gosh, you don't have a Bill so of Rights. Wh wh why don't we, Stephen? And why do you disagree? Because a Bill of Rights, if you look at the history of Bills of Rights around the world, they enshrine the things that a country is obsessed about at the point in time when the Bill of Rights is constructed. So in the United States, for example, um, they just fought a war of independence against the British. And they the right slavery. to bear arms. The right to bear arms was in, considered at that point in time to be absolutely essential to the citizenship rights. I'm sure if we fast forwarded 200 years and looked at the state of gun ownership in the United States today, we wouldn't think that was the thing that we wanted to enshrine in our constitution. And in Australia today, I think we could make the same sorts of observations. They're about what you're obsessed with. I actually think democracy and parliament should be the place is, is that, where we are making these sorts of decisions. Is that if the, I could just make one point up yeah. there, I actually don't think you should be, um, you should be in fear of, for your job, sir, because of your religious beliefs. And I don't think somebody should be in fear of their job because of their sexuality or their sexual orientation either. I don't want to live in a country. where that happens. P Perrin, where do you sit on this issue of a, of a Bill of Rights? Would it impede the sovereignty of the Parliament to make laws? Uh, yeah, I uh, actually in fierce agreement with Stephen on that, on that, um, that point because I think we have inherent freedoms um, in Australia and, and we've got uh, certain of those are included in the Constitution and, um, you know, Section 116 covers the freedom of... Uh, religion uh, to to some extent it's been um, it's been considered variously over the years through high courts but the one thing that none we we all think we shouldn't need anti discrimination mm. acts we should not need an act that uh, bans discrimination based on sexual sexuality gender race uh, or age. But and we, we do. should, we, but we do, and we shouldn't need an act to allow freedom of religious expression. And yet, what we are finding is, um, it's likely that we actually do. But as Stephen said, something drafted by Parliament that can be amended over time, fit for purpose. We did try to bring it in. It it didn't pass for many reasons at the time. The Labor Party said that if they were elected, they would deal with it. So I hope they do, and I look forward to reading the legislation that they bring forward.